Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to be back with you once again. For those of you that may not know, my name is Dustin Pruitt. Uh, I'm the location leader of the Winchmore Hill location of Restore Community Church, the, the, the family of churches that we are. Uh, and I get to continue on with us today <clears throat> talking about the Holy Spirit and how it speaks to us and how it's a part of our lives Today, we've had the pleasure of talking about certain gifts of the Spirit, whether it comes to healing, to prophecy, to speaking in tongues. And we're, we're here not specifically talking about a certain gift, but we're here today to talk about certain fruits of the Spirit, if you will. Uh, we're mainly going to be sitting in chapter 5 of the book of Galatians. Uh, we, we might jump here and there, pull a verse in, but we're mainly going to be sitting in chapter 5 of Galatians. So if you have your Bibles, turn it to, to that chapter. If you have your phone, open your app, get to that chapter, open a new tab on your web browser, get to that, so we can all be on the same page here. Because um, I think the, the fruit of the Spirit is important. I think... You, with all these other gifts, you can't have one without the other. They, they've got to be working in harmony with one another. Um, so why don't I just kind of give you a quick context, if you will. Galatians 5 was written about 50 AD approximately um, by Paul. He, he, he's coming to a church that's somewhat divided at the time. There's there's somewhat two sides of it. There's the legalistic side, and then there's the the wild and free side, if you will. And stop if you if you're already pulling parallels in your life and your church and your society. We're, we're all gonna get there, um, but we have the legalists and we have I want to say outlaws, but they're the wild and free. Um, and Paul's trying to show the right way, God's way through this. So we're, we're going to go in Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to be starting in verse 19, and we'll, we'll work our way back. In verse 19, it says, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He's saying, I could go on and on. Things that are like these things, but I don't got enough time to list them all. He says, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited and provoking and envying one another. So he's right down the middle. So this divide, what's the divide? Let's go to the, the legalistic side. So basically what is happening is the Jesus is the continuation of Judaism. And so you have, and he opened it up to Gentiles, which it, it used to be closed to. And so the Jews are seeing the Gentiles like, hey, come on board. You got to be just like us, though. You know that law of Moses? You got to follow that, too. Uh, and we see that in verse 2 of this chapter, verse 5, it says, Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be no value to you at all. Meaning if you're joining us to follow, and you need to follow the law, the law, back, you know, Levitical law, then Christ is no use to you. You've missed the message entirely of who Jesus Christ was and why he came and why he did all that he did. So that, that law, it, he says in verse 3, Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from you. You have separated yourself from Christ because of that. So this legalistic standard of it has to be a certain way. It has to look 
a certain way. It's got to sound a certain way. It's legalistic. And then there's the other side, the, the, the wild and free. He says in verse 13, you, my brothers and sisters, he's basically almost turning his posture. On my other hand here, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> he says, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. He's, he said, I get that you found this freedom in Christ. You found this new life. But you shouldn't do everything that just feels good. Just because it feels right doesn't mean it is right. Just because it feels good doesn't mean it is good. So he's saying over here, you guys, it you can't follow the law. You can't set the standard and be like, it's got to be this, 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 and this. And you guys, you can't just say, well, Christ forgave all sin. He died for all sin and his blood covers. So I get to do whatever I want because it's all under the blood, right? I get to do it because grace abounds, right? Paul's cutting right through the middle of that. Like, no, no, no. What it is, and I'm going to say it again, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. <coughs> he says, against such things, there is no law. The way of Jesus isn't Levitical law, isn't the dressing a certain way, isn't the sounding a certain way. The way of Jesus isn't freedom in everything. We're free from sin, so sin has no control over us. So though I may act in a sinful way, I'm not under sin. He's No, the way of Jesus is to be loving, is to be joyful, is to be forbearing, to be kind, to be good, to be faithful, to be gentle. And so that's what Christ is calling us to. Us as restore, us as a people, as you as a person, as me as a person. And so let's, let's kind of understand what these fruits are. This isn't just something to chase. These are a byproduct of a relationship. Uh, like many of us might be married. I'm making wild assumptions here. Um, I didn't get married until I was in my 30s. But my relationship with my wife has changed me. And my relationship with my wife has changed her. It, like This change comes out of relationship. These fruits come out of relationship. But I, I might be getting ahead of myself there. Let's dig deep, a little deeper on what each of these fruits really means. Love. Let's start with love, the very beginning. Love is so important. Uh, so many songs have been written talking about the importance of love and how the world needs more of it. But it's true. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was his love that drove him to make the ultimate sacrifice for us. Jesus didn't want to go up on that cross. He said, Father, if you could take this from me, please take it. But his love drove him to it. <coughs> So love is the cornerstone of a relationship with Christ. So if you decide to give your life to Christ and you feel like you are clocking in, clocking out, that it's a transactional thing, that I'm, I'm signing my name on the dotted line, there's these contract rules and clauses that I got to follow, you've missed it. You've missed it. And Paul talks about that, that you have, you have alienated yourself from Christ. You've, you just, you're a stranger all of a sudden because you've made it a transaction and not a relationship. And so it's love <coughs> that God first had for us that needs to be the cornerstone, the fruit of the Spirit. Next up is joy. This is this isn't just having a smile on your face. This isn't just having a laugh. This is something that transcends mere happiness. It is a deep-seated gladness that stems from knowing and experiencing the presence of God. 
No matter what's going on outside your four walls, even inside the four walls of your home, that you can be happy knowing that God exists, that this, all of this, you, me, wasn't an accident. That God so loved you, the joy knowing that God loved you, that he died for you, that he died for me. That's a joy that no matter what's going on, no matter what my bank account may say, no matter what letters I get in the mail, no matter what people say, I know that God loves me so I can be happy. No, I'm not saying it's the hardest thing, but if we have this relationship with God, these fruits come naturally. Next up is peace. And this isn't just like, ah, oh, quiet, still. It's, it's not that kind of peace. It is a inner tranquility. I, I, I once heard a, a pastor say before that, and I'm sure he didn't come up with it, but a boat doesn't sink until the storm gets into the boat. When the water gets into the boat. If the storm, if the water never gets into the boat, the boat's fine. And so the same thing for us is peace. This fruit of the Spirit that is peace is an inner tranquility knowing that no matter what the circumstances may be, no matter what's on the outside, what's going on, no matter what the, the chaotic thoughts that may enter my head, it is knowing that God is my all, is my everything, he's my rock, and that I have this relationship with him, that I can lean on him in these times, and I can find peace in that. And that the storms of the world doesn't enter in so I don't sink. That's the peace that, that is talked about in the Bible. Next up is patience. And to, to continue on, the storm raging, the things going on, the trials and tribulations of this world, of this life. It's to, to endure it. To know that, yes, they're happening. And we'll weather it and we'll get through. But they're going to happen. It, it, it's not promised that everything is going to be sunshine and buttercups and rainbows and we're going to frolic through the flowers until we make our way into heaven. Christ promised persecution. He promised the world is going to be hard because the world is broken. But that doesn't mean we have to let it ruin us and wear us to where we break, wear us too thin to where we break. So that's the patience, kindness, kindness to be kind. It's the genuine desire to extend kindness to another person. Though it's not always easy. It's not always easy when people may scowl at you, say mean things to you, may remind you of somebody that once did it, but it's, it's a grace and, compassion, grace and compassion towards others. Knowing that God works all things. And we reflect that to the people around us, to that mercy that God has shown us. We extend that to other people. Next up is goodness. This is one that maybe people of my generation and younger, is we, 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 we fall towards that, that too much freedom side of the debate of the, of the, that Paul is addressing in Galatians. And so we struggle with this. Is the moral excellence that flows from a heart transformed by God's grace, leading us to do what is right. So much of, of my generation and younger, it feels like if it feels right, it is right. When in our relationship with God, our relationship with the Spirit, He shows us what is right. The fruit is birthed in us. One that is goodness and brings justice it brings righteousness. But those are byproducts of the fruit. Not to rely on my instinct. Because just because it feels good, it is good. Next up, please stay patient with me. We're, we're, we're going to tie this all with a nice pretty bow. Faithfulness is the unwavering commitment that yes, I know it's hard. Times are tough. 
I had, I feel like I have evidence pointing the other way. God, why didn't you heal this person? God, why do you allow that to happen? But to know that your father is out there and he loves his children and that his word is yes and amen, that his designs are greater than what our minds can comprehend, that it's for us to prosper, that his will is not for any of us to die, but all shall live, which the legalistic side would say people that don't live like this are going to hell. If you don't have the certain haircut, we're going, we're going real deep on the legalistic. If you don't have, men, if, you, if your hair isn't short, if it's longer than your ears, you're going to hell. Ladies, if you're not wearing uh, a skirt, you're wearing trousers, you're going to hell. Like, that's far, far. But that legalistic, that's, that's, that's not it. Next up is gentleness. It's a humility and a meekness that, yes, justice and righteousness will be a byproduct of this, but a meekness and a humility of, it's not about me being right. It's not about my, getting my point across. It's not about my voice being heard. It's about just doing what is right with kindness with gentleness, with love, with patience, with peace. Who's going to get upset by that? No law can stand against it. This, this, this reminds me, I'll, I'll finish this and I'll tell my story in a moment. Next up is self-control. Kind of pairs well with, uh, with goodness. Self-control is the mastery of of our desires and impulses. That suddenly, the things that I want to do that aren't right, the sin that I want to do, it's not so tempting anymore. I don't really want to do that anymore because I know it would hurt God's heart. So that self-control, the mastery of myself, comes out of this relationship with God. The things that would hurt my wife that I, I might've done in the beginning of our relationship, not meaning to, I now have an aversion to. I would never say those things again because I have have that self-control. I have that mastery over myself. And it is a fruit of our relationship, just like this is a fruit of my relationship with the Spirit. And so this this reminded me that, that no law can stand against these things. I come from the great city of Houston, from the was once great, could be great state of Texas back in America. Um, And a few years ago, they made it illegal, a finable offense to feed the homeless. To feed those that couldn't feed themselves. That, That boggles the mind. How could you? Why these people? Why can't we feed them? And so there's a famous court case of a church uh, that went out and in gentleness and in a faithful, all the fruit of the spirit and a patient and a kind and a good and a faithful and a self-controlling way, they just went out to feed the homeless. Handing out bags of sandwiches and crisps and a drink. They weren't shouting from the rooftops, hey, look at what we're doing. Aren't we great? Here's the photos on Instagram, the videos on TikTok. They just... They just did it. And the police came along and they fined them thousands and thousands of dollars. And the church has taken it to court and they're like, look, guys, we're just feeding the homeless. And though there's a law against it, for months now, they've had trouble finding a jury that doesn't think the law is ridiculous. So for months, they've been interviewing hundreds of people of like, hey, do you think you could be impartial to this, to this court case? And everyone's like, no, absolutely not. Of course, you, you feed the homeless. That's what you do. And so that's where, though there's a law in, in, in the great big book of Texas laws, you can find a page and Article 5, subsection B, you can't feed the homeless. And 
in the city charter. In reality, there is no law anymore. And so that's what I feel like Paul is talking about, is that if you follow, if you exhibit the fruits of the Spirit here, what law can stand against you? Now, I'm not saying there aren't people, there aren't Christians in other countries that exhibit these and they're being persecuted. But that's a whole different matter. That's a whole different story. Those people are suffering under an evil regime. And so these fruits of the Spirit are something that we embody through a relationship with Christ. A relationship. That's, that's kind of what we've all been learning as, for me, as the years go on, but I feel like that's what we've been teaching, especially in this, these Spirit Speak series that we did last summer and we're doing again, is just to deepen our relationship with the Spirit of God. We, we talk a lot about, maybe this is just ministry and, and, and speaking to other ministers and preachers. We talk about the Holy Spirit being the supernatural. And I feel like we've talked a lot about the super part of the Holy Spirit, the healings, the miracles, the speaking in tongues, the prophecy. And now I feel like we're talking about the natural things of the Spirit, these things that naturally come out in here on the earth, that you can almost touch and feel that these things, the Bible tells us this is the path of Jesus. This is the way. And so all of this is so that we may bear witness as followers of Christ. Not to wave a flag saying, hey, if you didn't know, I, I follow Jesus. Hey, do you see my t-shirt? Back in the early 2000s, we had a, when I was young, we had a Jesus is my homeboy t-shirt and it had a, a cartoon character Jesus on there. Hey, did you see my t-shirt? I'm a Christian, just in case you didn't know. Did you know? No. The fruits of the Spirit should speak loud and clear. That as followers of Christ, that we live this relationship with Jesus, we become living testimonies. That if we have this relationship with God, we can't help but exhibit it. And so that's what we need. That's what you need. That's, that's what Restore needs. But that's really what the world needs. Think about when Jesus was here on this earth. Read, read all, all the Gospels. Jesus acted with self-control. He acted with love. He acted with peace. He acted with kindness, with faithfulness, with patience, with goodness. Story after story exhibited how Jesus behaved. And he changed the world. And so for us, if we want to change, the, let's, let's start with one person. Let's change the world of one person. Let's love them. Let's be kind to them. Let's be gentle with them. Let us be good with them. Let us be in self-control of our own desires and urges. Let us be compassionate. That is bearing witness of the goodness of God. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That they would see the fruits of your relationship with God, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And man, Jesus must be real then, right? That's, that's the question. Why would you do this otherwise? This can't be easy. Not as easy as you make it look. And it caused people to question. And in Galatians 6, the next chapter that we've been focusing on, it says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Say that if, we've, if the, we exhibit these fruits, if they come out of this relationship, a harvest is coming. And, and the Bible is talking about harvests, harvests in the past. And I believe God promised that the field right now is white with harvest. We're meeting it is ready. It is ready. It is 
if, if we just had more workers, the Bible said, if we had more workers. So let's work on this relationship we have with God. Let's work on this relationship with the Holy Spirit and exhibit the super of the supernatural aspects of it. Let us please prophesy. Let us please have healing. Let us speak in tongues to edify ourselves. Let's also get the natural of supernatural of these fruits and the importance of them because they're so important for you, for you, but for everybody. So please, why don't we bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you so much for who you are. Every step of the way, you've not left us with with a, a, a mystery to solve here. You've not let us fumble our way. <clears throat> but God, you showed us your way. You explained it. And just like out of any relationship, it just, it comes out. So let's chase after you more and more. God, as you fill us more and more with your spirit, Surround us more and more with your spirit. God, so that be more of you, more of your fruit, more love, more peace, more patience, more goodness, more kindness, more self-control. And change the world. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Well, that's it for me this week, guys. Please tune in next week as we continue on. Uh, until then, I'll see you. Bye.